Howdy. Boy, is this the home of Benjamin Cartwright? Yes, sir. Feather my horse. This man you're looking for, you, uh, you say you lost track of him ten years ago. That's correct. His sister recently received a first letter from him, postmarked Virginia City, in which he stated that he sometimes does odd jobs at the largest ranch in the vicinity. I've ascertained that your Ponderosa fits that description. Yeah. Oh, this is one of my son's horse. Horse, I'd like you to meet Colonel Dunwoody. We've already met. If I may ask, why do you want this man? He's wanted for desertion by the United States Army 10 years ago at Snake River. My orders are to return him to Washington for a military court-martial. After 10 years? There's no statute of limitations on desertion. Well, you, uh, you haven't told us the man's name, sir. Well, I consider it extremely unlikely that he was used his right name. However, fortunately, I have a daguerreotype. You recognize him? It's hard to tell. Picture's pretty faded. The man is at least 10 years old that people change. And... They can't have changed that much. We hire a lot of extra help in the Ponderosa. They, they come and go. Huh? With your permission, Colonel, I'd like to keep this and do some checking. May I remind you, gentlemen, that withholding information from the federal government on a case of this kind is subject to rather severe penalties. If you have any information, I will be at the Virginia City Hotel. Good day, gentlemen. It's Bill Winters, Paul. I'm gonna go warn him. You do no such thing. But, but Paul, we've known Bill 10 years. We're not gonna let the Colonel take him. Colonel says he's a deserter. Yeah, but why did he desert? Hey, Pa! Horse! Get out here, quick! I just rode in and found him hanging over the rail. Let's get him into the house. Hang out at the bottom of that house. It's been a long time since they had any trouble with Indians. Just showing it. We don't. That means that we're withholding information from the government. I'm not sure we should get mixed up in this. Paul, the way we know Bill, we ain't got no choice. Now, who on earth could possibly gain anything by bringing to trial a man who refused to massacre innocent women and children? I could, Mr. Cartwright. Colonel, you shouldn't be out of bed yet. Oh, evidently not. Did that statement surprise you? Frankly, yes. It shouldn't. You see, I was the commanding officer who ordered that so-called massacre at Snake River. Doctor, yeah, it's your turn. Can't get free. Yes, I can. Good morning, Ben. Morning, Mr. Cartwright. Good morning. 
Maria. Can't. All right, hey. Stop making so much noise. Can't you see your father is talking to Mr. Cartwright? Oh, we were just playing, Ma. Yeah, well, you just play somewhere else, huh? Go on. You too. You stay for a cup of coffee? Oh, thank you kindly, Maria. I had breakfast just before I came over. Well, then you can use a cup of good coffee. Hop Singh is a pretty fair cook, but coffee is not one of his specialties. Well, if it isn't too much trouble. No trouble at all. Long about now, Bill's about you for his 14th cup. Oh, don't just stand there talking, woman. How am I going to teach the children any manners when their father just hasn't got any? <laughs> Good morning, Father. I've got some breakfast for you inside. Morning, Wayoka. Does he know? Oh, sure, Shawnee's no. He knew five minutes after the Colonel arrived in town. Uh, figured it'd probably be a waste of time, but I had to come over and tell you anyway. What do you aim to do? I don't know, Ben. He's bound to find out we are. I realize that. I want to thank you for going to all this trouble. You never asked to hear my side of it yet. That's up to you, Bill. I was his lieutenant. I was second in command. When he told me that he planned on making a surprise attack against the Shoshone village, the Snake River, I told him, I said, I was, I was, I was ready to fight Indians, but not to make war against women and children. He told me I was sentimental. He said that the only thing he wanted to do was to make sure that no white settler was ever molested by an Indian again. Now, this he proposed to do by setting an example, one example, a horrible example that all Indians would remember. That's true. He deliberately set out to destroy the village. Deliberately. He also informed me that as a, a soldier under his command, I had no right to question his orders. I beg you don't have to say anything. No, 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 no. I want to I want to tell you, Ben. That night I sneaked out of the camp and I went down toward the Shoshone village. First one I ran into was Maria. She was washing some clothes down by the river. I put my hand over her mouth and I told her to run and tell the people what was going to happen. As a result, some of the people escaped with their lives, including Maria and her father. Unfortunately, the majority of them had no reason to trust a white man. They stayed on. They can still hear the sounds. The Shoshone have never forgotten. I'm afraid your guest is in very dangerous territory. Bill! Bill, please come here. Hurry. What's the matter? Ben, get your horse. Come with me.
Bring you something to eat. Colonel, I'm I'm sorry. I I just don't understand you. How can you how can you dog a man for ten years? Crime has nothing to do with his crime. He should have been punished long ago. And his desertion was a blot on my record as a commander. A humiliation I have endured for ten years. Well, I intend that humiliation to end. You're perfectly willing to sacrifice this man to justify your slaughtering an entire Indian tribe. I understand from my inquiries in town that your own mother was killed with an Indian arrow. You go warn the colonel, I'm gonna circle the house. Save your life. That's also the man who deserted me at Snake River. How can you be sure after all these years? Mr. Cartwright, I can recognize my own son. Your son? Yes, is that so strange? Yes. It seems strange when a man is so intent on destroying his own flesh and blood. Then I suggest that you read your Bible, Mr. Cartwright, the story of Abraham. It is now apparent to me that you were familiar with the object of my search all the time. You men now have a choice. You can lead me to my objective, or you can suffer the consequences of your own obstructionist tactics. I will give you one hour to decide. Bill, do you want me to pack our things into the wagon? And run? Where would we go to, honey? We could go no, up... No, no, no. For ten years now, I've been afraid of this. Every street I walk down, every... every morning when I get up... No, if it's gonna come, I want to get it over with. No, Bill, no. We can go away, we can go up into the mountains, we can go so high they'll never find us. Members of my tribe would take us in. They'll protect you. And the children. Maria, there's something I haven't told you yet. <laughs> what is the meaning of this? Why do you break into my house like animals? Let him deny what he has done. You come with us. By whose order? By order of Keokuk, chief of the Shoshone. No! For what reason? What for? Tell her. Tell her how you saved the life of the killer of our people. Tell her! I know that. I sent him. If you had killed the colonel, it would only bring further reprisals against our people. No. Tell her the real reason you saved him. That is the real reason, Maria. To prevent further reprisals. But also because he's my father. I was almost 
stuff. Yeah. Just can't understand a man feeling that way about his own son. Well, he gave you the answer. Abraham was willing to sacrifice his son to God, but the colonel's God is duty. I can respect a man's sense of duty, but I always figured that in a good soldier, it was tempered with some kind of understanding. Well, I would say the colonel's qualifications as a good soldier leaves a great deal to be desired. That won't stop me from trying to reason with him. Well, you'll be wasting your breath. Yes. They'll kill him because he's got your blood in him. That may be, but they won't kill him. They won't risk another lesson like Snake River. Why did you come here? Haven't you done enough to us? I have no interest in your people. I came to take my son back to Washington to face up to his crime. Crime? You talk about crime? You murderer. Now you go back to your people and you tell them that if they harm my son, they'll face a worse punishment than they knew 10 years ago. I wish you were dead. I wish Running Wolf had killed you last night. I... <laughs> She's like all Indians. All emotion, no intelligence. That girl is your son's wife. Confess you are the son of the blood enemy of our people. He was your enemy, but that was ten years ago, Chief. Now, that was the time of war between the Shoshone and the white man. This is a time of peace. He talks of peace, while well, the bones of our women and children rot on the plains, and their murderer dares come back to mock us. You are quick to forget what your father has done. I think it is you who forget, oh wise shaman. You forget it was I who deserted the white man's camp to warn you. You forget to whom you owe your life. Did you forget too, Chief? Whatever you have done, you remain a white man and the son of your father. I am more Shoshone than I am white man. Have I not married into your tribe? Wyoka? Wyoka, am I not a good husband to your daughter? A good father to your grandchildren? And what of my grandchildren, those whose cries I can still hear? Chief Keokuk, you're a great warrior. Now, you were wise in the ways of war. What my father did, he did as a soldier, as a way of war. Massacre is the way of a soldier? You know, terrible as it was, I have come to understand that my father wished to set an example to end this conflict with the Indians once and for all. Kill him. Kill him now. Silence. It is the way of the white man's government to end war by killing women and children. And it also will be Keokut's way. 
by killing the son of the white warrior who killed our sons. You who have such great understanding will know that Keokut bears you no ill will and is grateful for past favors. But by the time the sun rises once more in the east, you will die. Keokuk has spoken. Keokuk has spoken. He knows, but he will not speak. Will you tell me where they have taken my husband? He is not your husband. He, he is not my husband. Then those are not my children. They have never been born. They do not exist, huh? Better for them if that were so. Hear me, old man. This is no time for games and secrets. You tell me where you've taken him. He will die before another sun has risen. They cannot kill their friend. Shame and disgrace. It was not your fault, my daughter. You did not know. No. I only know that I love him. Don't say that. I don't care who he is. I just know what he has been to me, to the children, and to you and all the Shoshone. Better to have died than to all my life to such a man. I love him more because he had the strength to do what he did. Tell me where they've taken him. I cannot say. You will tell me! I cannot say! Then get out of my house! He is still my husband, but you are no longer my father. Order you to go. Priya, you know he can't tell you. Wayoka, I want you to arrange a parley between Chief Keokuk and me. It will serve no purpose. Let me be the judge of that. The Shoshone know me as a friend. I ask as a favor. I will try. That's all I can ask. I make no promises. I cannot speak for Kyokok. Then how am I to know? Return to your home and wait. I will deliver your message. Taking their time sending an answer. Yeah, and I'm afraid you're wasting yours, Paul. As soon as they find out Bill's his son, they're gonna be up. They're gonna be right here. Yeah? What makes you so sure? The Colonel's the man they want, and the Colonel is here. Well, if Keith Cook agrees to see me, he won't do anything until after we've talked. I know him. Well, I hope you're right. Put the gun away, Adam. Yes, I quite agree. Firearms will not be necessary. I'm a little surprised in you, Colonel. I figured with your son being held prisoner by the Shoshone, you'd get a troop of cavalry together and storm them like you did at Snake River that time and finish up the job. It'll do, Hoss. Have you thought what you're going to say to Keokuk? I'm going to plead for your son's life. And remind them that Bill's their friend. We're all their friends. Won't work. It's worth a try. Bad strategy. You'll gain nothing by telling Chief Keokuk Bill's his friend. He knows that. He's not going to kill him because he hates him, but because he's my son. That's his way of answering my attack on his village. There's only one thing that can influence a mind like Keokuk's. My life in exchange for my son's. 
Well, that's very interesting, Colonel. I didn't think you had a father's feeling for a son. I'm sorry to disappoint you. The move is not an emotional one. It's based on strategy. Well, it's ridiculous. We're certainly not going to exchange one life for another. Well, I'm afraid, sir, you do not understand the Indian mind as well as I do. But I think I understand it well enough to know that I have a chance to plead for Bill's life. But if I had to plead for yours, it'd be hopeless. You're going to get your answer, Paul. I'm going outside, Colonel. I think you'd better stay in here. You're wasting your time. Send a message. You wish to speak with me. I intended to go to see Keokuk. I'm honored that he's come to see me. And about what did you wish to parley? Well, you know that. About our friend Bill Winters. You surprise me, Ben Cartwright. You've always been a friend to Keokuk and to the Shoshone. But you already know I will not parley about the son of the man who murdered my people. One moment. Hold! I told you he wouldn't listen to you. But I have a bargain that will appeal even to your kind, if you will hear me. I will hear you. My life in exchange for my sons. It is a trick. I said you can't do this. I am going to do it. Well, it's a simple enough bargain. And one that you should like very much. It is well. Tomorrow, at the setting of the sun, the soldier with the pale eyes will present himself at the Shoshone camp. And the other will be released. No, first you release my son. Then I will surrender myself to you. You wish us to release the cub so that we might capture the lion. Why should we believe you? Why should I believe you? You can kill two as easily as one. Enough of this! Tomorrow, at the setting of the sun, the prisoner will be taken to the front gate of his home. You, Ben Cartwright, Keokuk Trust, you will bring the murderer of my people, and there the bargain will be made. Otherwise, your son will die there. That was a devil's bargain you made, Colonel. What do you mean a devil's bargain? If somebody's got to die at a heap side, would rather be the colonel as, as Bill Winters. I don't think that's what he meant. What did you mean, Paul? You mean, you think the colonel's got some sort of a scheme? No, I think he's perfectly willing to give up his own life for his son. And if he dies, what do you think's gonna happen to Keokuk and the rest of his people? Yeah. Reckon the army would wipe him out, wouldn't they? But won't they do the same thing if they kill Bill? No. Bill is a deserter from the army. Probably go unnoticed. But if the colonel dies, there'd be a pretty big to-do about it. And he knows it. You mean he's willing to die just so more Indians will die? I think the colonel intends to do exactly what he came out here to do. No matter what it takes, he'll see to it that his son is returned to Washington for court-martial. And that includes sacrificing his own life, if need be, to keep Bill alive to face court-martial. No 
We are on time. I hope they are as prompt. Okay, Cook keeps his word. I keep my word too, sir. It's not just a man's word that's important. It's what motivates him. And this need of yours to avenge yourself and your son, it's not human. If you have been analyzing my motives, Mr. Cartwright, you're a more subtle man than I thought. But your opinion is of no consequence to me. doing down here? Did you have anything to do with the Shoshone freeing me? Well, the important thing is that you are free, Bill. You've filled out some. You're looking well. I haven't many vices. How's, uh, how was Mary? Your sister's well. I asked her to write me care of general delivery. Yes, I know. She didn't answer my letter. I advised her not to. I see. I suppose I... Uh, I should thank you for saving my life. No need. Evidently, your friends didn't approve. This is, uh, this is my wife, Maria. Yes, I know. We met before. to meet somebody. Come on, Eddie, you too. Eddie? Edward. I named him for you. I didn't know you had children. Well, I guess there's no way I could have told you, is there? And I assume we are as far apart as ever? You're still my father. I named my firstborn after you. Pa? Is he really your pa? Yeah. He's your grandpa, too. No, he isn't. My oak is our grandfather. Well, he's your grandpa, too, honey. This is my youngest. Her name's Maria. Little Maria? Edward, my grandchildren. Also the children of a Shoshone. Get the kids into the house. Come on. Go with your mommy. Come on. All right. Would you ride with me, please? Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't do that. You can't give up your life for mine. That is not precisely my intention. You don't understand how they, they, 
they feel about you. They're going to kill you. They'll, they'll, they'll torture you. Neither prospect frightens me very much. Son, ten years ago, I gave you an order which you disobeyed. I'm giving you another order now. Go to your house with your wife and children. But it's not an order. It, it's my request. What are you going to do? I'm going with him. And risk two lives instead of one? Your father is right. Your place is right here with your wife and your children. Ben, Bill, he's... you just make things worse. I'll go with him. I'll, I'll do what I can. If you're not back here by dawn, I'm coming up. I'm gonna go with you. Because I need your help. Help? I think you're beyond help now, Colonel. And don't forget when the soldiers come to avenge your death, your grandchildren are half Shoshone. I know. That's why I must not die. How do you intend to prevent that? By pleading for my life. They won't listen to you, not one word. They will listen to you. A little late for that kind of thinking, isn't it, Colonel? Perhaps, but will you try? Well, you know I'd have to do that. Thank you. I'll explain what I have in mind on the way. has gone from the sky, O oh great Chief Keokuk. Where is your warrior with the pale eyes? He will appear with the price of the life of his son. Take care of my part of the bargain first, Mr. Cartwright. Biggie, 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 Keokuk, you have the power of life and death over the prisoner. But before you decide, there is something he wishes to say to you. There is nothing he can say to me. And if you will not listen to him, listen to me. There is nothing you can say for him. I gave my word that I would speak for him. Speak. We will listen. Speak. I would like to remind you that the Colonel did what he did in time of war. And in war, just as your braves must follow your orders, so the Colonel must follow the orders of the great Nantan in Washington. And he was ordered to punish the Shoshones, to bring peace to the territory. But the massacre of women and children was not the way to bring peace. That is true. 
The colonel realizes now that he was wrong. He wishes to amend that wrong, but if you kill him, there will be reprisals, and more Shoshone will be killed, among them more women and children. And how does the Pale Eyes hope to make amends for the wrongs he has done to my tribe? He will go to Washington. He will return to Washington, and he will admit, so that everyone can hear, that he was wrong in attacking your village. He will say that such attacks can only bring more hatred. They can never lead to lasting peace. And he will apologize to your people. Apologize? Will that bring back our wives, our children? No. But it may save the lives of other Indian women and children. Words. Words. They spill from his mouth like poison. <laughs> Silence! How can I be sure the Pale Eyes will keep his promises? If I were not a man of my word, would I be here now? White man lies to save his own skin. <laughs> and if you were chief, what would you do? I would kill him. <laughs> You would kill him, knowing that many of our people would be killed in return? Even so. Do you feel no love for your people? I feel only hatred for their murderers. Look at him. This man one day will take my place. He cannot rule himself, and he wishes to rule others. Hear me, Pale Eyes. I hate you more than any man. More than Running Wolf hates you. For he does not understand as I do how great was your crime. But Ben Cartwright speaks good words, honest words. If I kill you, and many more of my people will be killed in turn, then more of yours, and again mine, Let history record it was Keokuk who put an end to this senseless chain of killings. And let history record it was Keokuk who brought peace to the Shoshone. Hey, Lies. You will promise to tell the whole truth to the great Nantan in Washington? I swear it. And you may go. None of my people will harm you. I have said none of my people will harm you. Go! see those parcels I brought back from Virginia City? Now, would, uh, would one of you be kind enough to deliver these to my son's house? Well, Colonel, of course, we'd be very happy to, but... Uh... my court martial. There's no need. We're tired of living in fear that somebody might discover his real name, sir. If it weren't for his love of us and his concern for my people, he would have gone back a long time ago. 
I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you both. And I think I can promise your husband back within six months. Six months? For desertion? Well, since I am the chief and only witness for the prosecution, by the time I get through explaining the circumstances, they may very well present you with a Medal of Honor. I have something for Little Edward. Thank you. And Little Maria. Thank you. Open them. Thing to remember your grandfather by. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright, and your sons for helping me see the truth. Are you ready, Lieutenant? Yes, sir. <laughs> 